discs like this, which are flipping over at this cycling rate of two to three seconds, depending on what I set it at. Set it at. And this had the lights. Thanks. Now I'm going to go into the rather boring part, and I hope that uh, it will not be too boring, uh, because I want to show you how I evaluate the efficiency of, uh, of electrolysis. And maybe I better do this, uh, skip all the equations here. Let's go back here. We have some kind of auxiliary energy here, which we've classified and perhaps loosely as auxiliary energy and we use solar here. So we have some kind of a collector here, photovoltaic cells, and we have a feed of the output of that either directly back into the electrolyzer, that's component one, or if we want to do some switching arrangements here, we can dump it into a storage battery, although we lose efficiency when we do that. And as you can see, we have a load out here. And so if we start out and measure uh, the joules, and here's the give function, required to electrolyze a certain amount of water, in this case, one mole, we then apply it to the water, we have gases produced, and we dump it in this case into a primary battery, which is called a fuel cell. And here are some comparative figures of what you put in and what you get out. And it turns out, and I've done experiments along this line, that you can have something which I don't think anybody's ever developed, and I'll explain this why. You can have a closed system here. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the temperature of the system is constant from here to here to here. Now, why is that important? Uh, let's say it's at room temperature, 25 degrees centigrade. In the normal, normal fuel cell, the way it is done now, you buy the liquefied hydrogen, and under high pressure at very cold temperature, you squirt it in here. Now, before you can squirt it in here, you've got to heat it up. This is one of the hazard <coughs> danger problems that people talk about. And you have to bring it to a certain temperature, and it depends on whether your battery is a low temperature battery or a high temperature battery. But the whole point is you lose an enormous amount of energy just changing gas pressures and changing temperatures right here. So your efficiency is bound to be low just because of that function energy in general, water, something viable for the future. And again, I want to emphasize, most of you know I am a physician by training and in spirit, of producing fuel for this planet that really is non-toxic, non-toxic to humans, that includes mothers and children and husbands and uh, dolphins and plants and everything else. And God knows the list is endless of things that are happening. And I, I personally feel that uh, our enormous use of fossil fuels with their toxic end product, whether it be sulfur dioxide, which affects <coughs> biological systems, or the nit nitrous products, which go up and deplete the ozone layer, and a lot of other things that you and I know, some 40 known toxic agents, that kind of come out of exhaust emissions. I think if we're going to fall as a civilization, it'll probably be, and I really believe this, uh, from asphyxiation. If you've ever been caught in a big traffic jam in a big city like uh, Mexico City, you'll know that the possibilities of uh, asphyxiation are very imminent. And LA uh, is not far behind, and most of the great cities on this planet are incredibly polluted. One of the, the first time I ever learned, and this is just an anecdote, how polluted cities are. I lived for a while in the state of Maine in a very beautiful primitive area on the sea where the air was literally always fresh. And there was a scent of pine in the air to boot. And uh, I had friends who had a lovely country home, and they had a set of leather-bound volumes of, of, uh, of Stevenson. And they loaned me a volume one day to read, which, which I read, and I had to make a trip to New York. And in New York, they had a penthouse apartment right in the 50s on the East River, a very posh townhouse. And they had left the other half 
of this set of bound volume, leather bound volumes in New York City. One had been in the fresh country air for 10 years and the other had been living in New York City for 10 years. The leather in New York City just crumbled when I took it off the shelf. It had been totally eaten up by the sulfur compounds in New York City. I might add that the Con Edison plant below at UN was only about 12 blocks away. But that really impressed me about, and then of course working at New York Medical Center in pathology and uh, cardiac surgery, etc., I have seen endless black lungs from people who've lived there all their lives. And I'm just aware by the feel and the smell and the sight and the sound of how really corrupting uh, pollutants are. So uh, my real interest, and in if this thing ever succeeds, and we know there's no guarantee with all the competition from other sources of energy, especially from gas pumps, whether it'll ever succeed. But I just want you to know that my real motive is to somehow get clean air into our lungs and get where we're going without paying a little asphyxiation price on the way. Thanks a lot.